Hi guys and welcome to Odds on US Open. Let's analyze the last Grand Slam of the year. Will Novak Djokovic win all four majors? Well, let's analyze everything with Sean Calver and of course with you. Leave a comment in the video and if you enjoy our videos, press on the like button, subscribe and click on the bell to get notifications. And now let's go on with the show. fourth Grand Slam of the season and there are many questions to be answered. That's why Sean Calvert is here with us. How are you, Sean? Morning. Yeah, I'm very well, thanks. Yeah, not too bad at all. Yourself? Yeah, pretty well. Uh, looking forward actually to enjoying this Grand La Gra uh, last Grand Slam, although Rafa Nadal unfortunately is not there. But uh, mm. Sean, there are so many, of course, good players uh, for this uh, US Open 2021. And we can check right now the odds and of course it's no surprise to see as in every single grand slam or tournament that we are analyzing that Novak Djokovic is the big favorite odds are 1.75 right now to Djokovic to win also his fourth grand slam of the season but there are some doubts right Sean because uh, we didn't see the yeah. best Djokovic of course in the Olympics tournament he was very nervous he was very controversial and uh, some people actually are starting to dislike him. What do you expect about the Serbian who has been resting actually before this tournament? Yeah, I mean, I think it's that's that's one of the things that that, that has probably annoys Djokovic actually that he's he's not getting, <laughs> whatever he does, and he's probably going to win the most Grand Slams ever. He's still not going to be the most popular player, which probably annoys him. But that's that's kind of beside the point. Um, what his what he's going for obviously now is 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 history again. We talked about it, didn't we, just before um, the Olympics? We were talking then about the Golden Slam, which <laughs> didn't work out too well for him. But uh, he's still got the chance to be the first man since Rod Laver in 1969 to win the Calendar Slam all four in one year, which is incredibly difficult to do. Um, but as you said, as you alluded to, how fit is he? Do you want to take a chance with him at four to six, four to five, uh, eight to eleven, whatever he is? Um, bearing in mind he's not played since that catastrophe in Tokyo, where he was he injured? Was it just fatigue? Was he just, as he said, just the pressure got to him? He's never he's never played well at the Olympics, which is, is a little surprising considering how well he's played every other huge tournament around the world. He's never been able to do it in the Olympics. Uh, not played since, as you say. Is it the shoulder? Is it fatigue? What is it? We don't know. He hasn't really said anything apart from I'm withdrawing from Toronto, I'm withdrawing from Cincinnati. We don't know why other than fatigue, shoulder, is he injured, isn't he? Do you want to back him at that price uh, based on that? Not for me, but I'm sure there are people that will. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned, Sean, the pressure, actually. This is a word that uh, a lot of times was uh, repeated during the Olympics because, of course, uh, Simon Biles okay. um, uh, withdraw no, from the Olympics. Uh, Jokovic said that he is able to manage the pressure. This has never been his problem, no? I guess the pressure also for Federer, for Nadal, these three are really able to handle the pressure. Do you think he can notice it when we are talking again about making history? Because uh, as you mentioned, no, since Rod Laver, no player has completed the Grand Slam, the four Grand Slam in uh, calendar year. Yeah, no man, I think I think Serena might have done it. But yes, no, no man um, has done it since Rod Laver, as, as we said, yeah. Um, yeah, will he handle the pressure? Yeah, I, th I think he probably will, but I, I'm more concerned about about the fitness element of it. Um, you know, he won't have played on a hard court uh, for months. You know, he's coming into this cold, really. Uh, it's it's a difficult one. We, we, just, we just don't know. You know, if, are you, if you're back in Djokovic at, at four to six, you are taking a bit of a risk because you, you just don't know how fit he is. He's not gonna, he's not gonna say, he's not gonna, he's not gonna, a week before this Grand Slam, he's not gonna say, well, actually, you know, I'm in a bit of pain, but I'll play anyway. He's, he's not gonna say a single word. We're not gonna find out until, Probably not even the first match. If it's if he gets an easy one, we probably won't know then until he gets tested uh, by somebody. We, we're not going to know. And he, he has had a lot of injury problems at the U.S. Open before. Um, he's actually only won this tournament once since 2015, um, which was I think in 2018. He, he, he was defaulted, obviously, <laughs> somewhat comically last year. You probably remember with the the Lions person incident. Um, but it's, it's all about his fitness. You know, if he's fit. He's obviously a good favourite, 
but that's that's the gamble that you're taking at the moment and, and i wouldn't be taking it at uh, four to six with plenty of other guys in in absolutely fabulous form right now coming in you know the Medev, the medvedevs the zverevs you know these guys are going to be be big big contenders this this fortnight mm -hmm. impossible to forget of course that incident with uh, carreño last last season in yeah. the us open <laughs> so you don't like the odds for jokovic let's see if you like better the odds for mm -hmm. medvedev he arrives in great form actually to flashing meadows uh, he won in toronto semi-finals in uh, cincinnati he only well in wimbledon he made the last 16 but uh, he's a player that already made good appearances in uh, new york last season for instance he arrived uh, until the semi-finals of the us open when he lost against uh, dominic tm three uh, titles for him this season canada Mallorca and Marcel, do you like this 5.0 odds, 6 to 1? Uh, with Medvedev, uh, he's coming in here in, in, in great form. He had a bit of a, a bit of a calamity in Cincinnati when he, he collided with the cameraman when he was playing against Rublev. Um, but yeah, we, we've seen this from Medvedev before in, in, the, in the summer hardcore season, um, the North American hardcore season. He, he, he loves this, these conditions, that they are, they are perfect for him. Uh, fast, quick. He's he's a proven competitor on these uh, on this type of surface. Uh, he's in great form. M my worry with him, and, and, and again, you, this is a little bit of an intangible, is is what's the weather going to be like? Because we we have seen it on occasions in New York when it when it's absolutely steaming hot. I wouldn't fancy him in those conditions at all. Um, we we saw it again in Tokyo. It was too hot for him. He just he just couldn't handle it. He's the, he's the one player that that for me is, is is a bit of a worry in these conditions, but you never know with the New York weather. Is it going to be like that? Is it going to be? It looks like it's going to be a little bit milder from the advanced weather forecast that I've seen. Um, how reliable that is, I don't know. Um, but the, the the weather is is the one factor for him that makes me think not so sure. Um, but if the weather's okay and his fitness holds up, then he's he's obviously a, a massive contender. Um, to, to win this title. He's, he's, he's a finalist here, uh, 2019, I think it was, um, lost in five to Nadal. So he knows, he, he's been here before, he knows how to do it. Um, he's in great form. Yeah, you would have to say he's a, he's a fabulous contender. Would I back him at that price? Probably not, to be honest. And uh, let's see if you back the player of the moment, probably as Verev, odds 6.5 yeah. for him. Of course, he won the Olympics. He also won last week in Cincinnati. The last two tournaments he played then were victories, Cincinnati and Olympics. He didn't play in Toronto. Also title in Madrid, in Acapulco. So great season for him. He knows how to arrive to the final last season. He lost the final against Dominic Thiem after winning these first two sets. Uh, let's mm. see if he has or uh, still this in mind because it will be very difficult for him to forget that final uh, lost last season yeah i mean yeah he, he should have won last year um no question about it served for the match against team in what became an incredibly nervy a nervy affair but he, he's the one that comes into hit into into this fortnight in new york in in fabulous form his confidence can't be any higher he's beaten Djokovic at the olympics and gone on to win that title there um, he's just won in Cincy. He never actually won a main draw match in Cincy before. Uh, he's lost every single main draw match he played. Uh, now he's come in and, and, and won the title there as well. Um, as you say, fabulous form last year in the US Open. There's, there's only positives about Zero, but again, with these with these majors, you, you kind of have to back in advance to get the value. Um, we, we talked, I think it was before the French Open when I mentioned we were talking about Berrettini, and I said, well. I think I fancy him more for Wimbledon, and we got the 66 to one uh, there, and he ended up making the final. So you kind of have to do it in advance because the value's gone now. So sorry, but what price is 6.5, seven, something like that? Yeah. At the moment, yeah. I mean, he was twice that price about a month or so ago. Um, you know, so he's obviously a, a huge contender. He's probably he's probably the favourite on form coming into it. If you can just sort of forget about Djokovic for a second, and we don't know what's happening with his his fitness. Um, but is, 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 again, is it value? Is it value at 6.57? Possibly not. With Zverev, you might get bigger in running because he has this, this terrible tendency of playing four and five set matches. Um, 
in the slams in general, but in the US Open in particular. Um, in fact, I'm just looking at the stats here. 11 of the last 12 matches he's played here have gone to either four or five sets. Uh, if I remember rightly, he was two sets down to Karenio Buster in the semi-finals last year. Uh, I do remember rightly because I backed Karenio Buster. <laughs> so I know, I know full well he was. So you, you're gonna, I think you're going to perhaps bide your time a little bit with these guys and, and they're not going to waltz through this tournament in straight sets. You, you might get a bigger price. The, the point being, yes, he's got a massive chance. Would I back him at that price? No, but I would probably look for a bigger price during the tournament. That is actually a good idea also to check the number of sets. Also, we have this market when we are betting on tennis and we can bet that uh, SBRF games, they are going to the fourth or the fifth uh, set and we can make some money there. So these are the three big favorites, but I'm going to also throw you four more names and you will tell me if you fancy them or not. The first one is Sissipas, odds 11.0. Yeah. Sissipas, uh, he's not great actually in the US Open, always bad results in flashing middles. Last season was a third round, two titles for him. This season, Leon and Monte Carlo, but he's coming from the semifinals in Cincinnati where he lost against Esberev. Uh, also in Canada, actually, he made the semifinals against Opelka, so he's not arriving in bad shape, actually, to New York. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, his, his form so far in the US Open has been poor. I think he's won only three out of the six matches he's, he's actually ever played in the main draw of the US Open. So he's got quite a bit to prove in terms of his form at this particular tournament. Um, as you say, played reasonably well, played pretty well. Well, you know, in 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 Cincinnati um, and Toronto uh, should probably again the, the, we come back to this thing about Sitsipas. He, he does have this tendency just to not be able to close out matches. Um, he did it again against Zverev. I think he was four-one double breakup um, in the final set of that match. Failed to close it out. We talked about this before in in in, in our previews of other other tournaments when Sitsipas has, has had these great players. Or the, these great rivals in a, in a winning position and, and just not been able to close it out. Um, that's still a, a big worry for me um, with Sitsipas. My other concern about him is these these lake hold courts. Um, we saw him lose to Apelka a couple of weeks ago. Um, Apelka was just obviously he's he's, he's a, a bit of a one-off in terms of how he can deliver a, a serve, but he was just putting this heavy kick serve into Sitsipas's backhand, and he, he just couldn't do anything with it. Um, I actually prefer City Pass on a slightly slower surface than this. He, he likes to kind of dance around that backhand. Uh, he doesn't really have the time for it against powerful flat hitters on a, on a really quick surface like this Lake Hold one is. Um, I think the fact that the crowds are back this year, that's something we haven't mentioned yet. Yeah. I think that's going to be a, a big plus for him. He's going to get quite a lot of support from the Greek community out there in, in, in New York, City Pass. And he's the kind of player that will feed off that, and it's it's it's, it's actually it's actually quite, quite was quite sad to see the U.S. Open last year with zero fans. It was it was a bit of a depressing experience. But and this this time, I think it's going to be the first Grand Slam with with full capacity again since since the pandemic. So I, it, the atmosphere is something that we can't <clears throat> underestimate too much because it is. If you've ever been to to New York, Flushing Meadows, it's it's a, it's a fabulous atmosphere. It's crackling with energy and and. That, that, I think, will help certain players, and one of whom I'm going to come on to in a minute. But we, I think it will help City Bass, but I, I just have these doubts about him at the minute um, with the closing out matches, with this particular surface. Yeah, he's got a great chance. Again, would I back him at about 10 to 1? Probably not, no. Mm -hmm. Nice to see the fans back to the Arthur Ashe and to Flashing Meadows in general. Maybe you were thinking about Rublev, who could be a dangerous player in this US Open. He's coming from losing the final in Cincinnati against Zverev, last 16 in Canada. Last season, he did a pretty good job also in New York, quarterfinals against Medvedev. And he's lost already three finals this season, Halle, Monte Carlo and Cincinnati with one title in Rotterdam. Maybe with a price of 34.0 for Rublev, uh, he can make a good tournament, actually. Well, yeah, possibly. Um, I think we've mentioned before about Rublev that and he, he hasn't he hasn't changed my mind. Um, I still don't think he's got the <laughs> belief at the highest level. We saw it again, you mentioned runner-up in Monte Carlo, runner-up in um, uh, Cincy. 
Uh, it was he wasn't even close in those matches. Not not even close. He doesn't. I mean, he, he has technical deficiencies in his game. The second serve is is all too attackable by the elite players. He, he'll get away with it against against slightly lower ranked players, and you know he, he can he, if he can attack you, you're in, you know you're in trouble. But that second serve is a weakness. The backhand still isn't. It's it's decent now, but it's still not a fabulous shot. Uh, and I just don't think he has. He just doesn't have that that self belief that that kind of almost unshakable self belief that the really top guys have. I think he's just too nervy. We've seen it so many times in in big matches. Um, he's a dangerous opponent, yeah, absolutely. Don't get me wrong, but I, I I I can't I can't see him winning this title unless he has an amazing draw for one reason or another. I I, I just don't see it. Mm -hmm. Probably it's also difficult to trust uh, Shapovalov, uh, especially after seeing what he's been doing in the US Tour. Uh, lost, lost in both first games in Canada and uh, Cincinnati, but he was coming in the previous Grand Slam. Remember that he made the semifinals in Wimbledon uh, last season. He made the quarterfinals against uh, Carreño Busta. 34 for him as well. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the guy I was actually alluding to when when, I, when we talked oh. about um, <laughs> when we talked about the crowds. I mean, this is a guy who absolutely will love um, the crowds being back. He's got a great record actually at the U.S. Open already. I think he's won 14 out of his 18 matches that he's actually played at this tournament. That includes the qualifying tournament as well. But we, we've we, we've seen it. He, he's, he's made really great runs here um, at the U.S. Open. Love, he's a kind of player that absolutely loves that kind of atmosphere. Um, he's been he's been poor since that Wimbledon semi-final, but let, let's kind of gloss over that just for a minute. Um, made a Wimbledon semi-final on a surface that he's never he, he really struggled with grass. He's he's to, to make the semi-final of Wimbledon coming uh, so soon. I think he's only 22. Um, based on the struggles that he had, is is fabulous, and that's going to give him a great deal of confidence. Not sure why he went to I think it was Gestard after that and played one week on the clay. It didn't work out for him at all. Uh, had a bad night in Toronto. Um, I thought he'd go quite well in Toronto, but he, he played TFO in the first round there and it was an incredibly windy night. He just couldn't handle it, couldn't handle the wind, the conditions and, and loss there. Um, so he's not coming in in, in in absolutely fabulous form, but I think once he wins a match or two, um, he gets involved in this New York atmosphere. Again, this is, this is again, coming back to a point I made earlier about, about um, Anti post bets. Um, I backed him. Uh, let me see what the price was. Um, he's actually fifty to one. I backed him at a few months, a couple of months ago. Um, to be honest, he probably will still get that price now. So I, that one hasn't worked out that well. If I'm being completely honest, he probably can still get fifty to one on on or thereabouts on um, Shapovalov. No, no, okay, it's lower. So yeah. Still, yeah, still a reasonable price. Um, I think he's got. Yeah, I think he's definitely got a chance. Um, for the reasons that I've stated, yeah, the, the, the form is a bit of a worry, but yeah, big, big chance. I think he'll like. I think he'll like this uh, this fortnight. All right, then Shapovalov, we mark him. And the last name I want to throw you is Berrettini, of course. Uh, after yeah. uh, arriving to the final in Wimbledon, also in Madrid, or the ATP Cup, two <laughs> titles for him this season. Can he also repeat the success of the grass in uh, London? Uh, I'd be very surprised. Uh, in all honesty, and that's purely because of his uh, physical condition. Um, he, he picked up a bit of an injury in that, that Wimbledon tournament, whether it was the final or just before or just after. Uh, I think it was a thigh injury and that's kept him out for a long time. So he's only played a match or two since, he's, since, he's, uh, since he made that Wimbledon final. I think he admitted himself he's not, and, uh, and it's obvious really, he's, not, he's obviously not in the best of form. A couple of matches on a hard court, He's going to need, I think this tournament's just come slightly too soon for him. If it was another month down the track, then I think he'd be certainly a, a big contender. He, he's still got the ability to, to cause a, a, an upset or two. I just don't think he's got the fitness at the minute um, to go all the way. And his, his price is just a little bit too short now based on the fact that he, he has made that Wimbledon final. Um, he's not he's not one for me this week. I, I'd be very surprised if he if he was able to make sort of semi-finals, finals. That, that would surprise me based on how little tennis he's played in the last couple of months. Cool, Sean. Then uh, I, I just want to ask you if among the other names that we've left uh, out, uh, would you yeah. highlight 
some of them, for instance, I don't know, Carreño, who made a great Olympic tournament, or who do you think can make the semifinals at least? Yeah, Carreño Buster, as you say, he's got he's got a, he's got a great record here. Um, you know, you know what you're going to get with with Pablo Carreño Buster. He's uh, he was a little bit disappointing for me in Cincinnati. Um, against Medvedev, but I think Medvedev was just too, he was just too good. Sometimes you just have to take your half and say, that's that's way too good on the day. And it was, but he's he's done great here. He, the slightly quicker conditions, they do they do help his game a little bit. I know he's more renowned as, as a, a slow court player, but I actually think he, he's really effective on, on the quick courts as well. You know what you're going to get from him? Again, the draw, we haven't really talked about that because obviously it hasn't happened yet, but if he gets a good draw, um, then yeah, absolutely. He could win. The, he could win the quarter. He's done that before, as you say, semi-finalist. He was. He was only a set away from the final um, last year. So he's certainly one that could that could give you a decent run for your money at a decent price. Um, the other one that I backed. We were talking about Shapovalov, who I backed earlier. The other one that I backed at a similar time was was her cash, um, the, the, the Wimbledon um, semi-finalist. Um, he was 100 to one, I think. I don't know what he is at the minute, but I think he's probably a very similar price. Uh, you'll certainly get close to 100 to 1, if not 100 to 1. Um, 67, actually, way lower. Okay. Yeah, so decent price. Um, I think he, his confidence, again, very similar to Shapovalov, his confidence will have in, in, increased uh, hugely for that Wimbledon semi final. It, it, it's, it's been happening. You can see it, it's, it's been happening because he won Miami. Um, you know, very few people fancied him to win Miami earlier on this season on hard courts. So he's done it. He's he's got he's got a Masters 1000 under his belt, which a lot of these guys haven't. Um, you know, the contenders at big prices they haven't got these Masters titles under their belts. He has. The Wimbledon semi-final can only help him. He's shown what he can do against Medvedev. Um, beat him at um, at Wimbledon. Should have beat him the other week as well. Ended up losing the final set tie break. Um, so he's a guy that's. Yeah, I think you, ha you have to put him in. You have to put him in as a contender. Again, the draw is going to be massive for him and, and all these other long shots. But yeah, it hit him, as you say, Kareni Buster, as you said, uh, Shapovalov, those are the kind of the three that that could do it. There's some veterans coming back to form as well. We saw right. Dimitrov and Monfils yeah. playing better, a lot better. I'm not saying they're going to win the US Open, they almost certainly won't. But they started to show a little bit of what they can do after a long, long time in the doldrums. Um, you know, Dimitrov made the semi-finals here a couple of years ago. Uh, so those guys, those guys could make the quarters. Um, but yeah, I think we've, we've more or less touched on the, the main contenders. Great, Sean. Then let's enjoy the crowd. Let's enjoy Arthur Ashe, Flashing Meadows, US Open 2021, back to normality a little bit in uh, New York. Uh, thank you. Let's see if we can see the fourth uh, Grand Slam of the year for Novak Djokovic. Thanks, Sean, and happy as always. Open. Bye. Thanks a lot. We just spoke with uh, Sean Calvert about the ATP draw, of course, in this US Open 2021, but also in Oddspedia.com, we can place our bet on the outright winner of the women chart. And now we can see the odds, actually. And the number one favorite is Ashley Barty, the number one of the WTA with odds 5.0. Remember, always. There are so many surprises in the female chart that is uh, very risky and that's why the odds are very high for each contender. First, Barty with odds 5.0 as I mentioned, Osaka number 2, 6.0 for her, Sabalenka 13.0, then we have Sviatek 15, Serena Williams of course. 15 back to the court where she won so many times and then we have uh, higher odds for Andreescu or Pliskova or Gauff for instance 17 and some uh, Grand Slam winners Simona Halep odds 19.0 for her Muguruza 21.0 or Victoria Azarenka or Kiki Bertens odds 26.0 you can of course place your bets as well in the ATP or the WTA on Oddspedia, you can check the best odds for tennis, so enjoy the US Open. Now you have a little bit more of information to place your bets in this US Open. Let me know what you think in the comment section, of course, and if you enjoy our videos, press on the like button 
subscribe and click on the bell to get notifications. Also, you can listen to all our videos in our podcast. See you very soon.